La Rochelle, France, to meet a unique group of divers who compete in a sport where any mistake could end in disaster. You have to be very precise. We miss a dive, we pretty much end up in the hospital. It has happened that people have hit the water and ended up unconscious. To be a good cliff diver, you need guts. That's the main thing. You have to have a feeling for, for adrenaline. I want to challenge the limits of what's humanly possible. Cliff diving is uh, the art of jumping off a 27 meter platform and performing as many somersaults and twists as you can. In the Olympics, the highest they go is 10 meters. What we're doing is three times higher. So you're, you're really starting to push the limits of what the human body can do. We don't stick just to the pool, you know? Whatever is high, we're ready to jump, so it's a lot of fun. A lot of the maneuvers are based off of 10 meter diving. So we spend the first 10 meters, for example, doing the dive that you might do from 10 meters. And then you have 17 more meters to fall. And it's during those 17 meters that you really start to pick up a lot of speed. We're hitting the water about 85 kilometers an hour. That's in about three seconds, that's pretty fast. And then underwater, you know, you go from 85 to zero in a couple of seconds and only in about four meters. I think it's uh, five Gs for an instant when you hit the water. It's a lot of acceleration, but then a lot of deceleration. Half of your body is starting to decelerate and the other half of the body is still just going in. So it's a lot of compression on your back. Your body is just handling all these forces. We always land feet first. And that's because the impact is so strong on the body that the wrists, shoulders, and, and arms just can't take the impact. Your feet have to be at a very precise angle to make a hole in the water big enough for your body. If you have your feet too flat, it's gonna really slap your foot. If you have your toes too pointed, you're not gonna make a big enough hole in the water and part of your body will make that hole and so you'll get a slap on maybe your chin or your chest. So everything has to be really precise. With regular diving, you're in a pool. You're in a controlled environment. A 10 meter is the same 10 meter everywhere you go. Here, or you know, a lot of the locations we go, you have to worry about ocean swells, for example. I mean, you can spend hundreds of hours of practice and one swell can just erase it in like a, a split second. You have to adapt in midair, pretty much. You know, you're falling and a wave is coming up and you have to react to that. So it's part of the challenge, but it's also part of what makes it a lot of fun. The perfect dive is judged on three fundamental categories, and that's your takeoff, the flight phase, and the entry into the water. I will say that the takeoff is the most important part of the dive, because it sets you up for a good dive. You know, the dive have a better flow, better rhythm, everything all the way to the water. The whole body works together. So as you bend the knees and you're loading the muscles in your legs, it's important that the core stays tight so you're not leaning back too far or leaning forward too much. You know, you want kind of a neutral position there as you drop in. And then, yeah, it's just kind of how many somersaults and twists can you squeeze in and, and land safely. The perilous nature of the sport was brought into sharp focus in La Rochelle as Steve Labou fractionally misjudged his takeoff, hitting his head on the platform. He miraculously managed to maintain his body position well enough to enter the water unscathed. His safe entry was a result of lightning quick adjustments made in his flight phase. When we're in the air, we're always making tiny corrections. One tiny mistake can mean the difference between a perfect dive and a dive that could be very painful. Um, that's kind of what makes it exciting and, and what keeps us on our toes. If I know I'm flipping a little bit slow, you know, I can squeeze the position a little bit so it goes a little bit faster. So you can fix a lot of things. You have to announce your dive. You have to tell the judges exactly what you're going to do. And they're going to look that you did all of that first but it has to be really clean technique. So, you know, they like to see the, the, the long arms, they want to see straight legs, toes pointed. You know, they want to see really nice warmth. They don't want to see none of this, none of this, you know, it has to be really clean. Lastly, and most importantly, is the entry. They're looking for no splash on the bottom. It takes a lot of control to hit at a perfectly vertical entry. You'll see some guys a couple degrees short, a couple degrees long, and again, deductions for all of that, as well as probably a little bit of pain. The progression of the sport is actually amazing and, and exponential. I mean, the scores are getting higher, the dives are getting harder, more degree of difficulty. I'm always thinking about what else I can do. It's the only way that I'm going to stay on top. I'm always searching for those new dives and, and those other possibilities.